Well, Burnett back on his ski, skidded out, and then managed to right himself. So he will continue. Obviously, that's going to detract significantly from his time. But the American, well, will at the very least want to show what he can do to all his friends and family who'll be here down below in the grandstands. Carl Burnett here in his third Paralympic Games. Born in Portland and now living in Bend, Oregon. So Burnett comes down past this checkpoint and it won't be pretty time-wise, but that's because we just saw him slide out. But he did recover nicely. Confirmation there that Taiki Mori is our leader by 2.42 seconds. So Burnett looking to finish strongly. The crowd giving him a big hand. And down in 11th place for Carl. There is Mori. Still the leader and looking very good indeed. Now Shannon Dallas from Australia. He was 11th in yesterday's Super G, but he's the world champion from last year in Korea. So he will definitely be looking to show some of 2009 form. But Mori still up by about a second or so. Shannon fell through a roof 10 years ago while working as a carpenter and he was paralyzed but less than two years later took up the sport of sit skiing and represented Australia for the first time in 2002. This is second Paralympic Games. And this is his fourth event here. We were sixth in the giant slalom. So four seconds down on Murray, and it just shows you what a good time that was. The opening racer of the 21 competitors here. And Shannon hopes to establish a Central Coast Disabled Sporting Community Centre back home in Australia. So best of luck with that, Shannon, from all of us here at Paralympic Sport TV. Back we go to the top of the course for the Austrian Reinhold Sample. Well, three top ten finishes in his races so far, so always a threat. Tenth in the downhill, seventh in the slalom, and fifth in the Super G. So this, his strongest event. But not today. And he'll be very disappointed. Definitely... A potential challenger here. After yesterday's fifth place, he was skiing very well on this hill. And we just see the replay of where it all went wrong. Just getting a bump. And then when he back down to the angle, flew out of control. So, so difficult for these athletes when they're on the edge. Despite the tremendous suspension they have on their rigs underneath the bucket in which they sit. Always needs to be a pretty tight fit. The equivalent of a ski boot for those who wear them. Well, let's hope we can get things back underway pretty shortly. We won't have too much of delay here. Fantastic weather. And a very good day out for all these fans here. So good to see so many people turned up. Waving and cheering throughout the day. 
So Mori, very impressive there. And a bit of a gap down from Bernardi Man onto Braxton Thala in third. This though, the Frenchman, Jean-Yves Lemieux. Now the slalom is his preferred event and he won the silver medal at the World Championships last year. Ninth in the slalom four years ago in Turin. But he wasn't so fortunate in Monday's events here at these Paralympic Games. Crashed out of his second run. And more bad luck here for Jean even let's hope that flipped around there. Well, unfortunately for him, unable to complete three of his four events. Crashed out in the slalom, disqualified in the Super G. Crashes out here and just a 19th place in the giant slalom that he'll have to show for his efforts here at these 2010 Winter Paralympics. And as we've seen several times here, so tight to the course, going around the corner and hitting the bucket in which he sits, just brushing that. And once it touches the slopes, well, very, very likely that the athletes crash out. So two in a row. Slide out here. And let's hope there's better fortune for the Korean, Han Sing Min, who is the next racer on this course. Fans of Matt Hallett there at the back. The Canadian. And that Josh Duex group, top left. And we can see Taiki Mori is our leader by 2.42 seconds. Here after the Super G run. Well, we should still have a few competitors unless they have chosen not to start. And there are Josh Duex family and friends and he said many of these people were there for him after he broke his back in a skiing accident and it's such a pleasure and support for him to have them here to see him racing silver medalist earlier this week so whatever happens he will have something very sizable to show for his efforts. The medals, if you haven't seen them, are pretty large. Definitely can't miss if you see one hanging around an athlete's neck. And I'm sure they'll be very proud to show it off. And all the sunglasses there that people are wearing, well, that's something we certainly didn't see earlier this week. So we should still have another four competitors in the sitting division here. The men's super combined. One run of Super G, followed by one run of Slalom this afternoon. So this should be Korea's Han Sang Min. Sending him now. Just getting the go ahead. Confirmation from the race official at the top. And he's into the gate. Breaks the plane and we're off. So Han, 11th in the slalom and 15th in the Super G. He did enter the downhill and the giant slalom, but unable to finish those races. Second in the giant slalom from eight years ago in Salt Lake City. Now 30 years old and not bad. 
0.78 seconds down on Mori. But Mori, 2.42 seconds clear of the field so far. So if Han can put in a clean run here, he could be challenging come the final shakedown this afternoon at the end of the slalom run. So here he comes down this big sweeping right-handed turn. And a second and a half back at this stage. Well, he'll try and keep it as close as he can. And these final few athletes, not in the top 15, but based on their World Cup ranking and points accrued this season, not too far off the pace. And Han will certainly hope to make the top 15 places because then he goes in the top 15 spots this afternoon. Well, look at that second. So a very, very good run for the Korean. Still more than two seconds back, but better than all but one man so far. On and off. Get in this thing. Let's go. Now, the US flag bearer, Heath Calhoun. Come on, Bob! Eighth in the Super G. Heath was formerly in the US Army and he was stationed in Iraq where his convoy was attacked and hit by a rocket propelled grenade. Now the grenade hit the tail light right beside his leg and exploded and the injuries he sustained ultimately resulted in the loss of both legs above the knees. Heath in the LW12 category. Another soldier was killed in the attack and Heath wears a bracelet etched with the soldier's name and date of the attack on his right wrist in honour of his former colleague's service. And Heath, as I said, was chosen to carry the flag at the opening ceremony and he'll be trying to do his country proud once again here as he comes down to another checkpoint and see the time just getting away from him. 3.84 seconds down at this stage. So he'll look to try and pick up the whatever time he can down these final few gates. The crowd roar him down. And Heath Calhoun crosses the line. Well, he did pick up a lot of time down that second part of the run into fourth place. A very strong finish from the veteran. He looks pretty out of breath, but he raced particularly strongly down that bottom section. Now, two more athletes to close out this Super G run, beginning with the German Franz Hamstingel. 17th in yesterday's Super G and crashes in both the slalom and the giant slalom. So this is the stronger half you would think for him. Twenty-nine years old. And just gorgeous, gorgeous conditions here. Down Franz's run at Whistler. And it's incredible to think, after the nice weather we've had in the last few days, how bad it was earlier in the week. But you have to say that the, the decision to rejig the schedule, and it was completely rejigged, did throw the athlete's preparation off somewhat, but it wasn't a spurious decision. It wasn't taken lightly at all. It was made very much with the weather in mind. And you have to say that it worked out very, very well indeed. So it would have been nervous moments for the organizers as they made a pretty brave decision at the time. But they've been vindicated. And we, apart from the very first day of this Alpine program, when the whole downhill program was called off, we haven't had any cancellations at all. So we've seen several delays, but that's just 
due to some crashes, so things have been running pretty smoothly. And that's not bad when you talk about Whistler. Now down comes Hamstingel, the German, to finish his first run. And down into 14th place, so well off the pace, but he will be back. So, Hans Plush sent back up to the course because Chris Devlin-Young smashed into the gate, but just around it. And so he did finish, but he did crash pretty hard. Now, Plush had already begun his run because the races go down at intervals. So there'll be two men on the course, generally, as he comes down towards the end. The next man will already have been released. And so it's too late to stop placing the gate. And as we've seen on a number of occasions this week, he then had to slowly finish the course, get back on the chairlift, back up to the top, wait for a few more races, and here he is for take two. So Hans Plesch of Switzerland. He will at least have a clean course as long as he can safely negotiate the second part of this run. Down through this steep section in the middle. The sharp turn. And again, we see how impressive Tycho Mori's time has been. The first man down and still very much leading the way. And that's more bad luck for Hans Pleisch. Well, there's no coming back from that, unfortunately. He definitely missed the gate and skipped out, so he'll just wind his way down to the bottom. And caught the outrigger. His trailing right arm with the pole and ski tip, known as an outrigger, just caught on that gate after he'd safely skied round it with the rig and we've seen it before easy to spin out when that happens so the last man down Aldrich Jelinek of the Czech Republic Jelinek in the LW10 division we have the 10s, 11s and 12s the 12s have the most amount of mobility. The 10s have generally the higher level injury, so less mu muscles to work with as you progress up the torso. And that is all factored together, as I'm sure you know by now if you've been watching our Alpine coverage here on Paralympic Sport TV, so that Yellowneck will get a time boost when the factoring system is taken into account. He's had a 24th place finish in yesterday's Super G and a 23rd place in the slalom. Wasn't able to complete the giant slalom. Let's see if he's able to complete this run here. He's not going to be threatening among the leaders. We know that Taiki Mori will definitely be our leader come the end of the first half of this sitting division super combined and we have one run of slalom later on now oh well just went too wide couldn't hold the line and Yelenek well disappointment that's the end of his games He wasn't the quickest we've seen, but he was skiing fairly nicely and just goes too wide around that. Couldn't get into the turn quickly enough. And pops up out of that pole. Off the ski, and that's the result. So he'll be held back onto the ski. But that does complete our lineup here. 
21 races in all. The majority of whom will be back this afternoon. Well, as you can see, Japan's Taiki Mori, 2.24 seconds ahead of the field. And the Korean there, starting late down the order, Han Sang-min. But a very good run with Philippe Bernadiman of Austria, currently in third. But still, plenty to come this afternoon when the final standings will be known. Martin Braxenthaler, of course, and confirmation that six races there, unable to complete the course. Combination of little mistakes and just pushing it. See the athletes try and post as quick a time as possible so they can put the pressure on, set themselves up nicely for the slalom. Okay, first question, true or false? This is the first time Super Combined has been in the Paralympic Winter Games. 